My mother died of esophageal cancer when I was 10 years old. And at that time, I was de determined to become a doctor, and specifically to become a medical oncologist, I guess, to treat cancer patients. But after studying medicine, I realized the limits of treating individual patients as a clinician. And then I decided to pursue a career in epidemiology to study how we can better prevent cancer uh, and better detect cancer in an early stage. So that's what got me interested in uh, epidemiology. And uh, I then studied uh, cancer epidemiology for my master's degree and then pursued a PhD in cancer epidemiology at the school here. I studied here from 2011 to 2015. It was fantastic and I learned so much. And I think the unique thing of this school, of this particular program, is uh, uh, the interdisciplinary training we got from the program. Like, uh, I also pursued um, a master's degree in biostatistics along the way to my PhD. So that really strengthened my training in quantitative methods, and that helped me a lot in my career, like particularly in my, uh, like, uh, uh, research related to like uh, omics because I'm doing a lot of omics stuff so that biostatistical training really builds uh, like the foundation for my current research. My current research mainly focuses on the role of nutrition in colon cancer and I've been very interested in studying how we can improve uh, diet to prevent cancer uh, early in the, uh, in the early stage. And uh, to achieve that goal, I have been leveraging the population-based cohort studies with uh, biomarker-based uh, randomized clinical trials to, uh, infer, uh, to try trying to establish causality between nutrition and uh, cancer, and also trying to better understand the mechanisms. Along this line, I have also been interested in studying the interplay between nutrition and the gut microbiome in colon cancer. So as we know, there is increasing evidence suggesting the role of microbiome in cancer, particularly colon cancer, but the evidence is really limited. So what we are trying to do is to conduct prospective studies to establish causality for the relationship between microbiome and colon, uh, colorectal uh, neoplasia. So I've been involved in the large scale microbiome uh, project which is called uh, the microbiome among nurses in which we propose to collect uh, stool and oral microbiome specimens from 25 sovereign women throughout the United States. So we hope to build uh, like a, a platform, a harbor based platform for microbiome studies for the next uh, few decades I guess. <laughs> I was really fascinated by the resources we have, like the uh, cohorts, the data, like the longitudinal data we have accumulated over the past few decades so that we can study not just the, the current uh, exposures on like, cancer risk, but also the long-term exposures, the remote exposures on cancer, which is very important and uh, very uh, poorly understood. So. Uh, and another reason is like the biorepository we have at the school. Like uh, we have collected a, a variety of biospecimens from the cohort studies, including the nursing health study, health professional follow-up study. We have collected a blood, urine, stool samples from these participants, which allows us to conduct uh, integrated epidemiologic studies, not just the to understand the relationship between exposure and outcome, but also to understand the mechanism, so that we that gives us a better put us that puts us in a better position to establish causality. I feel the support when I was a student, I was a postdoc, and now as a faculty member. So, uh, as a student, I got a lot of uh, mentoring from not just my primary mentor, but also other mentors working in the similar area. So I think that's another unique part of the program. Like uh, we are very integrated, we are very connected to each other. So as a, as a PhD student, I feel like I'm, I'm a part of a big group.
like I can get I can get advice from like other uh, faculty members and also other uh, colleagues in the school. And uh, now as a faculty member, I'm also getting like a career mentoring support from my primary mentor and also from other colleagues in my program and uh, in other programs. I think we are a very, uh, how to say, very supportive community. Like it's really, it feels really uh, uh, great, especially for junior investigator to grow in this uh, supportive environment. I think it's my favorite memory was still my first uh, email communication with Ed Givanucci, who was my uh, PhD advisor when I was a student. So when I first approached him, he, uh, his response was very supportive and also very, uh, how to say, very informative. Like he walked me through like different options for application and. Uh, introduced me to the program and he was so nice, so friendly, so I feel, which is totally different from the responses I got from other faculty members when I, uh, during my application. So that was really, that really got me, like, like, that, I feel like at that moment I was, dis I was determined that this is a place I want to go, this is a person I want to work with, I want to learn from. So I'm now, as a, currently as a faculty member, I really want to inherit <laughs> this and uh, trying to be supportive and uh, to, uh, to uh, how, do, uh, how do you say this? Trying to uh, providing as much information as possible to uh, pro, uh, pro, uh, perspective students and also trying to be supportive to other uh, to all the students in our program to help with their career development.